Hello, so I thought I'd go through some of my old videos and watch them and sort of commentate on them. You know, why am I doing that? Well, I don't know really. It's basically a very easy way to do a video and it's also interesting to sort of comment on things that I've done and it's kind of like I can add extra information and things like that. So let's look at this one. This is actually a video. This is top five uh, books for the adult improver. Still gets watched, which is quite unusual because, you know, the normal system, I don't know if you know, you know anything about YouTube and uploading videos, but you upload a video, you know, it gets its hits on like for two days, two and a half days, and then they die. Like they're dead. They never get viewed again. But this one gets a few views uh, each week, which is pretty cool. So I thought I'd, I'd do this one. So let's have a look. I actually think I've still got the same T-shirt on as this video. Let, let me look. I think I have. I have got more than one T-shirt. Hello, Benedictine on Chessable Adult Chess Improver. So today I've been looking over my old chess books and uh, cleaning up the bookcase a little bit. And I thought I'd do a couple of videos on chess books. It's a complete coincidence. It's the same T-shirt. Cool. It's a good T-shirt. I've had it years, but it, it kind of opens up as like a new T-shirt. Anyway, let's let's have a look at the video. Looks while, while I've got them down. Uh, so <laughs> that's actually true. Four months ago is about the last time I actually did clean the uh, bookshelf. Very practical. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is five chess books which I believe are really beneficial for, particularly for the adult improver. You know, all my videos are based for adult improvers, twelve twelve hundred to eighteen hundred. Go oh, 800 really, because I'm looking at more beginners as well. Type of thing, but maybe a little bit before as well. Uh, so the criteria for this then, the books I choose have to really contribute towards chess training. Right, so there's no, I'm not choosing a book but that's, that's really good for, for no reason. It's got to actually contribute towards your improvement as, as an adult player. So yeah, the, you know, the books are, don't just look good. It's not like the history of chess that's going to be really, you know, uh, give you knowledge about the chess and the no, I think that's an important point actually because there's loads of really good you know chess books out there but if they don't really contribute to actual improvement then kind of what's the point in using that I think that was my idea behind this video originally and the chess players and things like that it's got to actually have practical value um next they've got to be without personal bias so books like this one for example Judith Polgar I think it's a great great book great book but maybe just because I like Put Judith's plain style and aggressive style that you know I might be uh, more of a personal bias sort of thing. So I've not included books that I've got personal bias. Uh, so yeah, five books only. Why five books? Yeah, well, you know, otherwise the video goes on forever and I'm around. So you might be wondering why I sort of posted a like midget version of myself in the bottom uh, left hand corner. It's because the bottom right hand corner depends on which way you look at it. Uh, I was using really bad sort of set there with bad cameras and camcorders and things like that. So. You know, I couldn't, the quality was really poor if I blew it up. Now, I've got a slightly better cam uh, camcorder, webcam, that's what I'm thinking of. Slightly better webcam now, so I can I do a slightly better version. But Ramble on it enough. <laughs> but, but but actually, seriously though, like with, with books, you don't have much time as an adult. Really, you don't have much time, you have other things, people are working, True. you have other hobbies, other interests, you have to cook the tea and do the pots and all other sorts of boring things. So I think it's actually practical. Do you not actually think servants are a good idea because then you don't have to do those things and you can sort of like, you know, spend more time doing things you want to do, but, you know. To have five books to be rich for that where you can gain a lot from. And I think if you can only have five books, these would be my five books. Okay. And I've got to be careful in this video not to press the space bar because it will end the video. Oh, it's a short yes. Cookie. So I'm putting the mouse here. So if I keep talking to myself about my mouse. So I was using a different screen recorder. I wasn't using, what do I use now? Uh, OBS. Yeah, I use OBS now, but I couldn't uh, do OBS early on because I got really bad software. I got like really poor computers. So I had to use these like really crappy recording systems and, you know, the quality was really poor. And, you know, uh, I, I did one thing where I, I used the Windows thing and I pressed space, but I used to pause it. Then I changed that to something else. And when I pressed space, but it ended the recording. I had no like video editing software. So I used to think, oh, I'll just press pause and do the next book and the whole thing had cut off. So when I'm saying, you know, don't press the space bar, it's not a gimmick. It's actually, yeah, if I press space, well, the whole thing's screwed, <laughs> you know, which I did a few times, I think. Let's have a look. Let's carry on. Space bar, please uh, forgive me, because I've already stopped the video twice. So, <laughs> saying. So, so I know. Anyway. As we go through each book, don't press the space bar. That's the chant. Anyway, first book is Logical Chess by uh, Chernev, right? Really, really like this book, and it's a book that I used when I first started out. And, and yeah. to be fair, I've not looked at this book for a good eight years, so you know, I, it's from memory, but I do think it is a good book. 
had a go had a to sort of like go back and look at it again my views might be different but i don't know if they would be different because I still think at the time when i was sort of 1300 this book was useful so i still would recommend it based on you know eight years sort of previous prior knowledge yeah and it's an old it's book sense. and okay some of the analysis might not be correct it it's matter, written, you know. obviously pre-computer but i think what i would not take well, from this book is the idea of having because you know you're not playing stockfish so yeah, if there's some of the analysis is not 100% correct by a stockfish, it doesn't matter. It's the general ideas and principles that I think is most important in this book and in, in books like this in general. A logical thought process. And when you're first starting out learning chess, if you're an adult, because kids kids are different, you see they learn chess differently, they just suck it up. It's, it's like a language. But adults have to sort of painstakingly go through things. So when you're first starting out as an adult, you don't have much what I call in terms of a personal database of ideas in your head. You know, you don't have many patterns, many ideas. And when you're playing a game, this can be difficult. and You can take a lot of time in positions where if you've seen the idea before, you move really quickly. So um, in in order to sort of break that as a stopgap, using logical ideas um, is useful because it gives you sort of a thought process as well. Uh, obviously, logical moves is better than illog illogical moves, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> Basically. <that's good. laughs> but it's a good book. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, in order, well, this is the first book that I would get on, on that top like, top five yeah, list of bar. books. Okay, so that's that one. Next book, do not press the space bar, okay. would be the Lev Albert book, right? the Red chess book. training pocket really book. Is. So if you've not seen this one, you might be struck by the front cover, which is one of the greatest front covers cover. in chess history. I've not Definitely. chose it for that reason. right? I've chose it because the positions inside this book are absolutely fantastic. Right? And as it says on the book, 300 most important positions and ideas. Well, you know, it's difficult to judge what's the most important idea, but there's certainly a lot of important ideas in here. And I think, as well as key cap tactical ideas, there are, I think there's around 15 or 20 or so uh, key endgame ideas as well. So I definitely recommend this. And it's got a practical value as well because it's very, very small. It can fit into a, a normal sized pocket. You can carry it around with you. And yeah, you've always got access to really good positions. And, and that's what you want for your pocket books, really, isn't it? They do fit into a pocket. But there are some pocket books that don't fit into a pocket. They're, like, massive. They just call themselves pocket books. This is a pocket book, and it does fit into a pocket. I would recommend going through this book several times. Some really good, really good positions. I went through nice. this book two or three times. Really good. Uh, yeah, so there's that one. And next one, don't press the space bar, is Most Instructive Games of Chess Ever Played. Another show of selection. Uh, yeah. This is a really, really good book. And uh, this might copy the old annotations. Yeah, but there. the idea with this book, like there were loads and loads of game collections out there and, you know, lots and lots of good ones. But the games in this book have been selected for the purpose of being the most instructive games. They look like a midget in the corner of the uh, video, but never mind. So for that reason, this book should really come higher than the others. It's not just to, like, I could have put in Tal's books, games, for example, books, games, uh, games books, games books. But some of those games won't be very good. Some will be absolutely brilliant. But these have been hand selected for the reason of being instructive. And I, I often found uh, these games really, really useful myself. It's, it is a fair point I'm making. You know, you can have like a a games collection of like Carpovs. I've almost spoke Carpovs uh, like best games or the greatest games or whatever it were. And there's some fantastic games in there. And lots of games where it's just like there's nothing much to it. It's just like a draw. It's not very instructive. Uh, for the sort of adult improver sort of player. You want to be playing over games that have got some sort of like learning value to them. You know, rather than just going, Oh, that was a nice game by Carpoff, he drew this game, you know, whoever. So I do I do sort of stick by that, yeah. Definitely. And the annotations are really good. This copy actually is uh, you might be able to find a more updated copy. This copy is a bit old and the text is not very clear. It's the old sort of uh, what's it called? Not algebraic, the other one. It's one of it's one of those, but don't think that's a problem you just learn it you know if, if the book's good enough then learn the old notation so have a look for the, the most update what you call it what do you call it old it's a copy so that would be this book don't press the space bar press the space bar do not press the space bar do not press the space bar all right next book number two uh would be this fantastic book really really is a super book this one uh simple chess by uh michael sting so brilliant what this player does is manage to pack up so much pack so much into this book such a small space really making myself smaller in this video can i move myself under the side of the screen 
Does it even matter? No, it doesn't. So it's carry on playing and shut up. And this is for the most structural. Well, seeing one of me is bad enough. To seeing two of them. Anyway. Well, uh, strategy type sort of uh, positions really in this book. So what do we get? An introduction, outpost, weak pawns, open files, half open files, minority attack, black squares, white squares. This Super thin book with a lot of information, basically. So much in this little book. It's really good for, for chess strategy. And there are a few annotated games, you know, but it's the right in it, the positions that are in there and the approach to chess. This is really good. You could actually probably do this before this one, actually. You know, it's up to you. You know, a bit of both, but this is a really, really good book. I remember taking this on holiday one, one year and sat around the pool. Uh, you know, I'm on holiday next week. Can't wait going through this book again really really good right so number one don't press the space bar is space this bar. book so my best games of chess by alakine this is still a little bit controversial would this be number one because is this a bit too personal i don't know i just think that yeah you're not going to be playing necessarily you know quiz gambit decline declined uh, openings over and over again which you're probably going to get in this and some a little bit of french and things like that but I just think it's his annotations of Alakines. It's just really, really good, really useful. But, you know, you're probably better off drilling tactics than, like, spending loads of time with this book. I would recommend, you know, doing the tactics and buying, you know, common chess patterns. But, no, but, honestly, you know, this is a good book to sort of read and study. But from a practical point of view, it's your tactics that's going to sort of lift you to the next level. But if you wanted an all-round book where you're going to get you know, bits of information about the opening, bits of information about middle game structures, uh, strategy, end games, everything in this. I think there's everything in this book, and it is really good. I would sort of still recommend it, number one, as long as you are actually doing the tactics uh, yourself and playing and annotating games. Um, you know, playing over annotating games and playing games yourself and analysing them. Uh, I think, you know, these books are extra to all those things. I don't know if I made that clear in this video, but I've just done that now, so I'm having a sip of beer. No, so I, at first I thought, mm, is this personal bias because I really like a lot of these games? No, no, actually, no, because when I was starting out on chess, somebody told me that what you need to, ch to train chess is tactics and this book, and that's it, right? And, you know, obviously you probably need a bit more than that, but there are really, really good positions and really good ideas in, in this book. And, you know, it's not one for the thing I did. It's a huge collection of annotated games, uh, personally annotated by uh, Alakine himself. Uh, but I remember, you know, going down to the pub and Fond memories. taking this book with me and I was just I was just blown away by a lot of, you know, the idea. I basically used to live in like a fairly rough area and he went, went to this pub. It was fairly rough. Uh, you know, it's like fights breaking out on the other side and things like that and like a DJ with disco music and, you know, things like that. And I would sit, I find a quiet corner and play over Alakine games with a little chessboard, you know. But, you know, who cares what people think? I never do. Uh, never do sort of think about that or worry about that. This used to do my own thing. So, anyway. Ideas, the gold nuggets of ideas, what I used to say. Golden nuggets, uh, in this yeah. Book. yeah. So, this is one that I, I would recommend as as well, definitely. For the annotations, you know, and, and this book's it's really nice, actually. It's really well put together. It is a nice book. You get it's huge. A proper quality book. You know, uh, go and buy this one uh, as long as you bought mine first. We choose <laughs> annotations, you know, per the game. And you get so, to, so to know laughing, a, a world champion well uh, thoughts, yeah. which is always, you know, useful. You know, it's Friday but night. For the, for the adult player, this is really good. Uh, what you could do is skip over some of the openings. I mean, obviously, when you do annotated games, it, you know, you're going over openings that you don't play. Actually, yeah, because when I used to play over a lot of annotated games and I'd sort of religiously go through the opening of openings that I don't play and I don't think that's me really very sort of practical. I would sort of think get to an early middle game and then go from there. Yeah, I just think it's useful to go over openings you don't play. So if you're an E4 player to go over C4 openings or D4 openings because you're learning structures and things like that. But I do think that after the you know the 30th like Queen's Gambit declined open that you're going over, skip it, move on to move eight, ten, twelve or something and then you will get to the meat of the middle game positions uh, and you know i think that's probably a useful piece of advice you can skip over a few moves really but yeah recommend this book as well so there we are and th those are my top fives uh have i got that's an honorable, honorable mention maybe we could do actually why not uh so this one the world's greatest chess games uh is also a very Fantastic very good book, chess really book really, yeah. with uh 
the world's greatest chess games, <laughs> according to the editors, anyway. So you also get out for this one, like history of the players and things like that. But I didn't quite make the top five because if I had to choose annotated games, then I would choose this one, the Alokine book, and definitely the, the Journey books as well. Before well, You've probably got room for six books. I mean, get that one as well. It's like worth about like four quid. You know, it's definitely really, really good. For this book. So, so there we are. Those are my top five. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for listening. I can now press the space bar without worrying. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello, Benedict. No, I think we'll probably leave it there. Anyway, thanks for watching this commentary video and goodbye. Don't fancy watching it again. Anyway. <laughs> Cheers.